Hi, everybody. My name is Angus, and I also go by Angus by Design. And uh, today I'm just looking to review the uh, final results of um, the Masculinity Under Construction uh, Seminar 1 of Building Our Own Wrap. So I will share that information with you now. <clears throat> so this is a Seminar 1. Uh, to develop a, well, a wellness recovery action plan. And it introduced the uh, participants to the five key concepts, which are hope, personal responsibility, education, self-advocacy, and support. And the group guides uh, participants in establishing a personal RAP. Uh, so RAP is accredited by the National Registry of Evidence-Based Programs and Practices, and certification is provided upon completion of the group in order to encourage uh, participants who are interested in continuing with peer support. Um, it encourages them to um, continue on their path. So what is RAP? Uh, RAP is a personalized evidence-based system rooted in self-determination. So the idea is that um, there's no final answers. There's always choices and options. Um, it's not a question and response situation where the facilitator is necessarily giving answers. Um, essentially, it is a, um, a process in which people are given the opportunity to create advanced directives um, when it comes to uh, crisis and getting well and staying well. So in this case, the intended participants were male-identified folks wishing to explore their gender and sexuality through the lens of masculinity. And that was simply just a theme um, for going through the uh, process of learning the RAP model. Um, RAP can be adapted and used for any purpose, um, and it can be incorporated in any system that people use uh, in order to maintain their health. So the discussions, activities, and in-person group sessions were there to really support the guys in exploring their wellness needs. Um, it really helps people to self-advocate and explore wellness. Uh, using a proactive skills-based approach. So this was um, really designed to help build a healthier and more resilient community for, um, for this particular group, which were uh, guys into supporting guys and other guys. Uh, core values and ethics uh, state that participants are treated as equals, with dignity, compassion, mutual respect, and unconditional high regard. So there's unconditional acceptance of each person as they are, unique, special individuals, um, including acceptance of diversity in relation to culture, ethnicity, language, religion, race, gender, age, disability, uh, sexuality, uh, sexual orientation, and readiness issues. And it encourages diversity, um, and it addresses systemic oppression, because it really was sort of targeting uh, the most marginalized of us. Um, and so really, the values included the, uh, the understanding that each person was an expert on themselves. So the focus is on strengths over perceived deficits, and the focus is on peers working together and learning from each other uh, to increase their mutual understanding, knowledge, and promote wellness. And this, this effort contributed uh, to empowering historically marginalized populations within the community as well. So a little bit about me, I'm basically a lifelong community organizer. I've been a volunteer in a number of areas for almost three decades, including peer support and front, uh, front grassroots um, education and health education back when um, HIV and AIDS was uh, still a major concern and where we were still needing to respond as a community. 
um, to people dying around us. So um, yeah, and so now I'm I uh, I'm a registered artist, uh, and I you sort of do all sorts of things. I consider myself an actionist, and I just sort of identify as having uh, complex adverse experiences. Um, so I identify as non-binary. I am certainly under the umbrella of queer, and I'm considered a relationship anarchist, which simply means that I don't believe in a, um, any particular structure of relationships when it comes to people connecting. Um, I believe everybody has the right to determine uh, the, the, the model of that relationship that works for them. Um, yeah, so I do a bunch of stuff, um, but I'm especially involved and interested when it comes to big emotions, um, LGBTQIA representation, and um, just in ensuring that people have access to the tools that they need. So Max Ottawa is a community-based organization that focuses on maximizing the health and wellness of gay, bisexual, two-spirit, queer, and other guys who are into guys, both um, cis and trans in the Ottawa region. And uh, a couple of points from their strategic directions included um, enabling guys to navigate health and wellness pathways across uh, our life course, fostering cohesive community-led social spaces and connections, building partnerships to achieve responsive systems for guys into guys, solidifying its organizational and policy foundations, and like laying groundwork for the Integrated Health and Wellness Center in Ottawa. And so they, their goals and their missions uh, and their values included um, like an assets-based approach as well, diversity, hassle-free service, uh, community participation, um, and, a, and a holistic approach. And RAP is certainly that. And then, of course, PSO. Um, it's essentially the Psychiatric Survivors of Ottawa, and it's an organization that promotes health and wellness in the communities where uh, people with lived experiences are supported and celebrated. And uh, they um, also offer the RAP uh, program there and um, really it's basically peers supporting peers and so these are just some of the highlights of the work that the guys did in the eight weeks that we got together so we explored things like how we were going to support ourselves um, we looked at the five key concepts and we brainstormed things that brought us hope uh, we talked about what personal responsibility means to us. We talked about ways we could educate ourselves. Um, we talked about uh, self-advocacy, and we learned a little bit about the Bill of Rights, the personal Bill of Rights, and we added our own. Um, and then we looked at the idea of support and the concept of needing, um, you know, at least five supporters in our life. Um, and of course, this is also a situation where we learn each other's wellness tools, the easy and accessible things that we can do to get well and stay well. And we explored like who our supporters look like, what our support network looks like. And of course, there are other parts of the wrap uh, include um, exploring different wellness tools, um, and issues that can affect our health, like light, exercise, food, nutrition, um, spiritual factors. And the guys explored what we look like when we're well, what we can do to stay well. We looked at triggers and trigger action plans, uh, early warning signs in those action plans, and then when things are breaking down in those action plans and we kept exploring what it meant to be together and being with each other instead of fixing and judging each other 
and looking at what our strengths were and how we could apply them. And of course, then we also looked at the other factors that go into the crisis plan. So this was just some general information because it was the topic of masculinity that um, I was sort of just workshopping and putting together um, as I was navigating and also making sure that the guys felt that they were getting what they were promised. Um, and so there was an intake session, uh, which um, was required as part of the micro grant that was offered for this program. And so there was the opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one discussions between me and the guys. So a lot of these um, discussions uh, led to laying the groundwork for having like a really supportive environment. And so uh, we had guys who were um, expressing their gender identity as male, non-binary, and trans, um, or sorry, um, two-spirit, uh, male and female. And we had pronouns which ranged from he, he and they, they, um, and anything but they. And we had a spectrum of sexuality. Um, from gay, bisexual, heterosexual, um, or heteroflexible, um, questioning, and queer. And these were self-identified markers. And then um, at the end of the session, we ended up with, um, so originally there were um, eight participants, two facilitators, and myself um, as a facilitator. And um, in the end, we had uh, six participants and three facilitators. So um, all of us had taken the previous survey, and then this was sort of the survey that um, was combined uh, from Max Ottawa. So this is like a little bit about the demographics. So we had two participants who ages ranged between 19 and 25. We had one between 26 and 35. Uh, we had a, two participants who were between 46 and 55, and uh, one who was over 56. Um, two people identified as trans with four uh, participants saying they did not identify as trans. One person identifies um, and um, describes themselves as indigenous and then uh, five were Caucasian. And then we had two people um, self-identify as two-spirit and four who did not. So again, it's just sort of looking at the different uh, gender identities that were participating in the group. And on an average of a 96% rating by participants, um, there was the feeling that attending the RAP had an impact on their physical, mental, social, spiritual, and sexual health and well-being. And some of the comments were, it was a fantastic group and I loved every session. The RAP session has helped me increase my confidence, has further helped equip me with tools that will help me to remain out of the hospital and living on my own terms. Uh, another participant said the RAP program has had um, a strong impact on me in many ways. I'm incredibly grateful for the gifts that I received through this powerful course. It was a wonderful, it was wonderful to spend quality time with other gay men, which I have not done in the last 20 plus years due to a PTSD sexual violence situation. So the group of men were absolutely wonderful. I smiled and laughed, which is something that I have not done in years. My mental health has improved significantly thanks to the content of the course, as have my interests in spirituality and connections. So on an average of 96% rating, uh, participants felt that attending the group was beneficial and 97% rated it, um, having felt more engaged and connected to the 2SL GBT QIA plus community as a result of attending it. Uh, an average of 97% uh, rating 
um, indicated participants felt more confident in their engagement with personal wellness planning. And comments were, uh, before this, I had never had a space or opportunity to explore my relationship with my gender and sexuality and had never ever been part of any kind of queer space. I am glad, I'm very glad that I now have several connections to this, my community, and I am starting to develop a more complete picture of my relationship with, uh, with this aspect of myself. And then even as one of the facilitators, I felt my connection grow to the community and had positive experiences within the community itself. I would love to do this again. It has helped my confidence in relating to other men and provided an opportunity to explore vulnerability and openness relating to my own gender and sexual expression. And the RAP program was very powerful and made me feel like I was waking up from a sad dream due to my past. I now feel I'm alive again, uh, thanks both to the content of the program and the incredible facilitator. The delivery of the material held my interest throughout the entire program. And confidence boost. So this is some of the feedback that came uh, as a result of the questions. So what was most helpful to you in this workshop? So connecting with an amazing group of people who all came in with the same level of dedication and willingness to be vulnerable. The importance of being able to speak freely. The entire RAP module changed how I approached my wellness and has been the most successful therapy in all the 12 years I've been doing therapy. Uh, identifying my triggers, having an amazing group of guys. The input of the participants was invaluable. The framework for crisis situations and identifying solutions. I found the connections that I made with others to be the most helpful thing about participating in RAP. The discussions, relationships, and vulnerability that these sessions facilitated are excellent and meeting everyone and being seen by the group made facilitation a breeze. And the wealth and wisdom and experience in the room that the RAP material helped facilitate, as well as the delivery of the material and the interaction with the men while discussing the course material and great learning space. So what was the most important thing that you may have learned? I always knew healing through others was important, but it was another thing entirely to experience it for myself and to know that I personally could thrive within that environment, that my brothers are here to support me. The crisis plan, which has been the most detailed I've done, uh, it's okay to change my answers. I love doing this class and look forward to doing it again that I am more prepared to facilitate than I had imagined. I always knew that opening oneself up to others and healing within a group setting was supposed to be one of the best ways to process mm -hmm. and develop as a person, but experiencing it firsthand and seeing how I personally fit in and the benefit from systems like this was very important to me. I have never had any group of any kind of group therapy type experiences before. And this was an excellent introduction into this world. It helped me to see a framework for how this type of thing could specifically work for me. Whereas before I could, I was almost entirely closed off emotionally from any larger community, basically only ever showing any type of vulnerability within therapy. Now that this pathway is open, I can visualize a model of how this works. I can actually start doing, uh, start to do more within other settings, for example, the real world. Um, that no matter where I go, I will have shared experiences that I'm able to relate with two other men in a healthy and vulnerable way. I learned that I'm a good guy and now feel much more confident about myself compared to when I started this course, whereas, uh, whereby I was very unhappy human being and forward momentum feels good. 
So other comments to share about this workshop experience? It went too fast. I'm looking forward to finding more opportunities like this. I'm totally blown away big time. There should be more. I will attend. Should be taught in all schools. One down, four to go on my way to ALF. Was lucky to have such a receptive and open group of participants. It went by so fast. Eight weeks seems like a lot at the beginning, but it totally flew by. And I felt like we were only getting started. I really want more opportunities like this. And I also want to maintain the relationships that I made with the other pa pa uh, participants and facilitators. It was great. The group was a safe space and promoted much sharing and, all the, and the participants were engaged and invested. And without doubt, Angus Wright and his co-facilitators were key in the success of the program. Thank you, Max Otto on the PSO. And simply thank you. So what's next? Well, that is a question mark. Um, this was a one-time micro grant. And so based on the feedback, I'm going to be exploring options to continue to have these conversations and provide these resources to the community. Um, I have plans to open it up to um, guys who just identify as guys and who are open to the same uh, values and uh, ethics that go along with the program and uh, looking to establish it in the community more. Um, because there is definitely a need and it looks like it's supported by people. Um, so we shall see. Um, there we go. So that is just the recap of the uh, micro grant, the Community Maximizer program. And I'm Angus Wright. I also go by Angus by Design. And I'm an advanced level facilitator for the Wellness Recovery Action Plan. Uh, I'd like to personally thank One New Heartbeat Incorporated out of California and um, all of my wonderful supporters for the uh, support over the last couple of years in being able to bring this idea to fruition. Um, the project was very important to me as a result of my personal lived experience in the community and seeing and losing um, our community uh, neighbors and partners and friends and longtime members. So uh, thank you, everyone.